On Nationwide this evening, we devote the entire programme to Ireland's finest stained glass artist, Harry Clark. We see something of the workings of Abbey Stained Glass Studios as they restore the Harry Clark windows damaged in St Mel's Cathedral last year. And we meet the County Wexford family who have produced a book and DVD in honour of the artist. We're coming to you from Andishert Centre of Education and Celtic Culture in Dingle. And we're here because of these amazingly beautiful stained glass windows behind me, crafted and designed by Harry Clark, who lived and worked in Dublin 100 years ago. Now, sadly, Harry Clark succumbed to TB and he died when he was just 41 years old. However, his work still lives on in many churches and other buildings around the country. And now, a County Wexford family have produced a book, a DVD and a website to honour and celebrate the creative genius of Harry Clark. Niall Martin went to meet them. They told her how, upon St Agnes Eve, young virgins might have visions of delight and soft adorings from their loves receive upon the honeyed middle of the night. She sighed for Agnes' dreams, the sweetest of the year. The Eve of St Agnes by Harry Clark casts a spell on all who see it, not least Lucy Costigan, who fell under its enchantment as a teenager. I was a student and I travelled between Wexford and Dundalk and my bus stopped at Parnell Square. So one day I had a few minutes to spare and I saw that there was the, the Hugh Lane Art Gallery just across the road, so in I went and discovered this absolutely magnificent window. I'd never seen anything like it in my life and I was completely smitten by it and I told everyone, family and friends and everyone you just have to go get to the Hugh Lane and see the Eve of St Agnes. Harry Clark created the Eve of St Agnes in 1924 by commission from the Jacob Biscuit family. While most of Clark's work was sober church art, his artistic imagination ran riot in this interpretation of a Keats poem. The story is, is really very like Romeo and Juliet, except there's a really happy ending, where uh, Madeline is in love with Porphyro, but their, their families are sworn enemies, so she can't be with the one she loves. So on Agnes Eve, she hears there's an old legend that if she goes to bed early, and carries out certain rituals, then her love will actually come and take her away. And that's actually what happens. And they lived happily ever after. Strangest Genius, the stained glass of Harry Clark is a family collaboration, which was nominated for an Irish Book Award last month. This All decisions the about the book were made at this kitchen table. Everyone had a designated role. Lucy wrote the words, her sister Theresa did research, along with cousin Ray. Her brother Anthony made the DVD, and nephew Michael took the pictures. Lucy's family live in Wexford, and it's here at Bride Street Church that the odyssey of photographing every Harry Clark window in the world began. Light is all the problem with stained glass. When you, when you, go, when you go to take pictures of stained glass, people often say to you, come here at 8 o'clock in the morning, perfect sunlight. But when sun shines through the glass, the face will be really, really bright. And then the rest, so you, don't, you want kind of subtle light, cloudy day maybe, or the sunshine from the opposite side of the building. So sometimes you wait around for a couple of hours and just try to get the perfect picture. I work in rehab care in Wexford, and I also am a counsellor and therapist. So that's kind of the day job. But isn't it great to have, have such a hobby and, and, and to be able to be immersed in all of this colour and light, uh, you know, outside of my ordinary work? Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, at Gory Church of Ireland, yeah. Verger Anne Slater yeah. shows off their pride and joy to Lucy's cousin Ray. Each of the six Harry Clarks in the church has a story of its own. 
Yeah. So these are the Harry Clark windows. This church is noted for them, with the, for the six of them. The, the incident central to that, uh, the commissioning of those two windows arose in the uh, rotunda after the rising when there was a surrender to General Lowe mm. that uh, Tom Clark, the senior Republican, was insulted by a British Army officer and it was this particular officer, Percival, uh, Lee mm -hmm. Wilson that was supposed or alleged to be responsible and uh, that is supposed to have led directly to his death four years later in Gorey where he had left the army and become a, an RIC man and was actually district inspector here. What do you understand as having happened? Uh, um? well, well I understood uh, Lee Wilson was going out of Gorey on the Bellicanew Road mm -hmm. at the railway bridge on the Bellicanew Road yeah. going towards uh, Westmount. My uncle, who lived on the Gorey Avenue, yeah. heard the shot. Right. I heard that from my uncle. He heard right. the shot that Sunday. As a result of all of that, we have two windows, one requested by his wife, wife that's right. the other requested by his uh, friend and uh, in, in people free, in, in the Freemasons, Freemasons, whose symbols are featured on a, what is a, a magnificent window. And both uh, similar in pattern and both uh, under the design of Harry Clark. That's right, yeah. There's approximately 160 windows and a number of panels that, that Harry Clark did in his lifetime. He died at the age of 41 and he suffered from bad health as well for, for a lot of his latter years. He, he had TB and also the, the chemicals, of course, that he was working with would have exacerbated his poor health and his chest complaints. After Harry Clark's death, his studios continued to produce stained glass, but it was never as good. Thankfully though, Clark's two decades of work has left us with examples of his windows in 15 counties in Ireland. So you're never too far from the work of a strange genius. Now that I've learned a little bit more about the beauty and the excellence of Harry Clark stained glass, I can only begin to imagine the excitement that you'd feel if you were sitting in your new house and discovered that you had a Harry Clark window in your kitchen. Well, that's exactly what happened to a couple in County Offaly, and Joan O'Sullivan went to pay them a visit. All the are brown, the are this is Ballycumber, a little village in County Offaly that's home to not one, with two collections of Harry Clark windows. The first is in the well-known St. Mansion's Church. The other, well, the other collection has been long forgotten about until Brendan and Una Malloy sailed in. Into a church. I passed along the way. We were living actually on a barge on the Grand Canal. Then we just sailed it down one weekend and moved, moved back down towards Barf, which is my home place. I knew deep down that I'd never be living on a barge for my whole life. So myself and Brendan were always looking for something different and unique. Um, so the church would have been way up there. Brendan came across Liz Church while out driving and the couple quickly fell in love with it. We put a bit in and we had it that evening. They wanted to get rid of it as much as we wanted to buy it, so. The couple planned to turn the church into a home, but quickly encountered obstacles. It wasn't listed when we bought it, and by the time we had actually say it closed, it was listed. So our, our engineer had condemned the roof. Um, we had managed to scaffold up the inside temporarily to hold what, uh, what was left of the roof up. Um, I took, to, took off the, the rest of the roof, um, reused all the original slates. We ended up having to um, basically dig a trench um, um, almost a kilometre down into the village and and uh, connecting to the local sewage system, which we've done now. So we've uh, so basically ticked all the ticked all the boxes, and uh, hopefully we can get away with just um, doing the work on the church now. With all the trouble they'd encountered, Brendan and Una were starting to wonder if they'd made a mistake buying the church. Once an inquiry from a family friend changed everything. Do you know about the windows in this church? We said pretty stained glass windows, beautiful, get lots of intricate detail. He said, well, two of them are by the famous Harry Clark. And we went very quiet and we looked at each other and we were completely shell-shocked. Well, Una was. I had no idea who Harry Clark was, so it meant very, very little. 
Brendan was quickly educated, though. Windows are considered extremely valuable. Um, like I say, it's a, the, the, the building is listed, so the windows can't be touched. Um, the last ones that were sold, I think, were sold in Sotheby's for... Um, it was a lot smaller window. I think it was 165,000 sterling in real money. The couple then attended the recent book launch of Strangest Genius, the Harry Clark story, where Brendan met a true fan of the artist who asked why he was there. So they asked me why we were here and I was just quietly informed her that um, we were just here to make sure we were the only two people in Ireland who had two Harry Clarks in their kitchen. And that sort of ended all conversation quite, quite quickly. And to make it even better, the lady that was launching the book, uh, son of a clerk, had signed the book prior, um, just a few moments before that for us, and she had signed it, um, really hope you enjoy having breakfast under Grandad Harry's windows. Until the church is completely renovated, the couple are living in a mobile home on site, but they're still enjoying their windows. We bought it at the height of the market. We really bought it at the absolute height of the market. And... Um, I know everyone, uh, we're all looking at negative equity in the ba in, uh, as a, uh, at the moment, but um, when you find out you have windows that are worth far, far more than what the church is actually worth, it's, uh, it sort of softens the blow a little bit. I think we, we definitely have something unique in these windows. The whole thought of having this, this, this uh, property done up now as a house and having two Harry Clarks um, shining down this every single day is just going to be absolutely, no words can say how special that is. I tell you, they're going to have to be very careful cooking in that kitchen, what with the steam rising and everything. And as for playing football in the back garden, well, forget it. Stained glass windows need a certain amount of maintenance and upkeep to have them looking spectacular. And Abbey Stained Glass is one of the specialist companies that repair damaged windows. And at the moment, they're working on the Harry Clark studio windows from the burnt out St. Mel's Cathedral in Longford. Niall Martin went along to their workshop to see how it's all going. Abbey Stained Glass in Dublin's Kilmainham has been repairing Harry Clark windows for decades. We're a third generation uh, family company. My grand uncle Tom Ryan uh, founded it. My late father, Frank, worked in it for all of his working life. I, m my wife Muriel and I have worked in it for 30 years and now we're passing into the fourth generation. Ken is now handing over the business to the next generation, Willie Malone and Garrett O'Grady. This is actually a stained glass window that was damaged in the fire at St. Mel's Cathedral last Christmas. The blaze began in an area behind the altar in the cathedral. The cause is unknown. Priceless stained glass windows have already been destroyed and a diocesan museum. It's very upset. Yeah. Just really, really upset. Yeah. It's our pride and joy here. But Longford's pride and joy is being rebuilt and so are the Harry Clark windows. This is the Virgin and Child uh, stained glass window from St. Mel's Cathedral. This was on the west transept um, and it was uh, caught up in the fire on Christmas uh, Day. Now we went down on St. Stephen's Day to have a look and see was there anything saved out of the cathedral. The, the cathedral was completely gutted and uh, strangely enough the two best stained glass windows in the cathedral were saveable. The stained glass itself will take extreme heat, up to 600 degrees centigrade. Uh, but the problem is when the firemen come and they put the cold water on the, on the uh, glass, it shatters. Now, you might look at it after a fire and say it doesn't look bad. But in certain cases, um, the glass, once you touch it, will just go into something like a bowl of sugar. Um, it's crazed throughout. Unfortunately, some of St. Mel's Harry Clark studio windows were destroyed, but by a stroke of luck, they can be rebuilt from scratch. In 1997, we were engaged to carry out the restoration on these stained glass windows, and as luck would have it, we still had the rubbings and photographs of the before from 1997. Normally, we'd dispose of the rubbings um, after a period of 10 years or so, but by a strange... Uh, a stroke of good luck, we still have them. Uh, the rubbings now give us the shape of every piece of glass in the cathedral. So we have complete details of every